Hello and welcome to Bungie's next dungeon, The Pit of Heresy. In this three-man raid-like activity, you'll dive even deeper into the Scarlet Keep and disrupt a hive ritual. The Pit of Heresy rewards a fully leveled pinnacle drop upon completion. As usual, I'll recommend that you do the dungeon without a guide first, as it's much easier to learn than a raid. But if you want the help, feel free to keep watching. Let's begin. The first encounter's goal is to kill three unique targets, a knight with a shield, a wizard, and a shrieker. In this cliff are many, many rooms, with six of them marked by a hive symbol. The uppermost symbol room is where you'll start the encounter. Kill the pit keeper to unlock the door. In this room will be a much bigger knight called an accursed sword bearer that will drop a hive sword when killed. You need this sword in order to kill our special targets. After you kill the sword bearer, in the back of the room will have three of the hive symbols. These indicate where our targets are located. All you need to do is go to those locations and kill the targets. Around the area will be sword bearers, ogres, and at each door will have a collection of thrall, acolytes, and knights, including pit keepers, which unlock the doorway that they are in front of. Just be on the lookout so you don't die. If you ever need a new sword but don't see a sword bearer, just wander around for a little bit and one should spawn in. The Might of the Broken Blade Knight can only be killed using the regular attack of the sword along with the super ability. You can basically just spam the basic attack non-stop in order to kill the knight, backing away when you need to regenerate health. The Omen of the Broken Blade Wizard can only be killed with the projectile attack of the sword. This is similar to a Dawnblade super attack, except it's green and it hurts wizards. It does hurt other stuff too, but the wizard is the focus here. The Oracle of the Broken Blade Shrieker can only be killed by blocking its attack and reflecting it back at the Shrieker. This is probably the easiest enemy to kill, you just stand there and block. While you can also reflect the Ogre Beams, they don't really do a lot of damage and they'll be much more annoying than they will be helpful due to their flinch. Now, if you ever need to go back up, there are elevators scattered throughout the area that can take you up. However, I've been experiencing problems where if I get on an elevator, I just die after a few seconds regardless of holding a sword or not. Just something to keep in mind. When all three targets are dead, you'll head to the very bottom of the area, and in the middle will be your exit. Simply kill all of the ads nearby to press on. After moving on, you'll be greeted by a lot of doorways. Before watching more, just try one of the doors. See if you get lucky with where to go. I'll wait. Yeah, so it's actually none of them. You're just gonna drop down low towards the middle of the area and there's a path to take to the lower level. In this next section will be a labyrinth guarded by invulnerable ogres. The goal here is to open up three blocked doorways with void orbs that drop from heretical knights. These knights are hidden throughout the labyrinth, mainly in the walls and hidden passages throughout the entire area. Now, unfortunately, without a giant map to show you, I don't really have the greatest descriptions on where the knights are. However, the ultimate PvE Lord Giggs has drawn a great map of the area to show you where everything is. Here it is on screen, and it's also in the description. As for the Void Orb drop-off points, one of them is to the right of where you initially drop down. Just take the path all the way. Another one is to the left in a similar fashion. Just take that path all the way down. And the final one is straight down the middle, as shown in this amazingly drawn map. All you're going to do here is navigate the area, finding knights and dropping off void orbs. Invisibility is good here, if you have it, to deal with the ogres, but otherwise you're just going to want to run or use a hidden path to get through. After unlocking this room, you'll have your next encounter. This encounter is pretty similar to the King's Fall totem encounter from Destiny 1. In front of you will be six acolytes and a plate. If this plate does not have someone on it for an extended period of time, it will explode and you'll die. So someone just needs to stand there. The goal here is to dunk six void orbs in the node next to the plate. 
These void orbs drop from the heretical knights, similar to how you got this place open. When you first start the fight, you'll have a lot of acolytes spawning in, and you'll get a debuff that starts to increase in strength. While I actually haven't died to this yet, I imagine that when it gets to 10 stacks, you die. Dunking a void orb will drop your stacks back down to 1, but only the person who dunked, not the entire team. Heretical knights will slowly start to spawn in, going from left to right if you're facing the three doorways. You'll kill a knight, grab the ball, dunk it, then kill the next knight, player 2 grabs the ball, dunks it, next knight, etc. until you get to 6. Whenever you dunk a ball, you'll have knights spawn in up on the high ledges, and you'll have thrall spawn in as well. The void orbs will eventually disappear here if not picked up, but you have a little bit of time in order to pick them up. Just remember to stay on the plate, and if you're doing this with three people, this is not very difficult, nor is it very long. I will actually be making a solo guide for the dungeon very soon, since you need a solo clear for the Harbinger title. After clearing that encounter, shoot the giant bubble near the plate to progress. Eventually, you'll hit an area with a lot of obstacles, moving pillars, and lamps. The goal here is to find three wizards and kill them to unlock the door. The exit door has three symbols on it. These are where the wizards are located. Essentially, this area is just a game of hide and seek and also don't get killed by a lamp. As Jez might say, it is a very mazy boy. Honestly, for this part, I just kind of wander and look for red on my radar here. I did spend about an hour making a very crudely drawn map shown here. This image is also in the description. I hope it is helpful in some way. After unlocking the door, we'll hit the final encounter. This is a circle arena with three points, one left, middle, and right. The goal here is to use three void orbs to dunk into the three nodes to be able to damage the boss. The targets in the outer rooms are the targets we fought at the first encounter, the Knight, Wizard, and Shrieker, and they are all killed in the same way as that first encounter, they just drop void orbs now. You'll kill the giant knights to get a sword, kill your targets, dunk the orbs, and have the boss be damageable. Note that this can be done in any order, it can be done one at a time, or you can have all three players killing one target each at the same time, it doesn't really matter here. When the boss becomes damageable, the center area will light up, and you'll be given a buff when you stand in that area, which lets you damage the boss. You'll also have some Thrall and Cursed Thrall spawn in throughout this phase. The boss has one main attack, which is a fire attack that shoots at you in a straight line, leaving a damage over time component on the ground better known as it's fire, fire. Don't stand in the fire. After a brief time, the boss will enter an animation where he'll slam the sword down, resulting in the death of anyone still in the inner circle area. I would just line of sight this as well. This process repeats itself until the boss is dead. When the boss dies, you'll have completed the dungeon. As I said earlier, I will have a solo guide for this place very soon for all classes without using Izanagis or Recluse or whatever else as that is needed for a title. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.